Good morning. Um, I am Angie Siemens with Cargill, and I'm going to switch gears from the toxicology back to micro in the meat and poultry space. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with the meat and poultry space, um, we have had performance standards. Um, FSIS in uh, 1996 as part of the mega reg. I don't know how many of you lived that. I'm beginning to think I'm really old because I do remember that, right? <laughs> you know, in the mix, okay? Um, you know, on that, um, they redesigned how they were going to enforce across HACCP, right? And introduce HACCP. And, and as a part of that, part of how they wanted to do the metrics, they did performance standards. And I love this discussion in, in a way, right? Because zero is easy, okay? Zero is easy, and we've seen the government lean towards zero. It's easy to communicate, um, et cetera. Um, easy for government officials to go in and take an absent presence test, Hey, right? You get, you know, whether you're, you're doing toxins or you're doing micro, et cetera, zero is easy. Performance standards are not easy. Okay, and there is a difference in performance standards, and that's the part I want to get you to think about, because if we do talk about performance standards, there are differences in how you apply performance standards. Um, FSIS chose to measure process control using salmonella as the, as the target organism, and they did it across all the species, but they did it with a qualitative metric, okay? absence, presence. Um, that, that you have. They didn't do it with a quantitative, which is what Candace was just talking about, is a quantitative approach to performance standards. All of us have the same goal. As much as I you know, get frustrated with FSIS and what we do, we all still have the same goal, and it's to make the safety of our products um, you know, foremost and, and meet the public health standards that we have. So that, that was the intent. The current standards, right, I said based on prevalence, the way they approached it and enforced it, right, is to say, all right, let's do some baselines out in the, in, in, um, the industry. Let's figure out what they're capable of. And then we're going to look at the number of positives in a number, in a sample set, right? So they're going to pull uh, 52 samples. Um, you're going to be okay if you hit 13 positives in that. Um, out of that, then, um, they created three categories, all right? So if you're in category one, you meet half of the standard, right? You've done, you've done really good, right, in their mind. If you're in category two, you're right at the standard, and category three is where you don't want to be, okay? Um, remember, this has been in since 1996. Let me show you where we're at as an industry. Is zero possible? in terms of, and I'm fo focusing on poultry, but beef is in this as well, is zero pos possible. This is reported quarterly. You can go on the website, you can see where the industry is relative to um, the categories that we fall into. So in looking at young chicken carcasses, this is a sample taken off of the carcass right out of, of the chiller, right? We have a number of plants, 63% meet category one, which means that we're lower than the, it's a standard. Um, category two is right at standard. Well, when you get into that, that's 87%, right, are, are there, but you still got a number of facilities that are above, above the standard. And we've been doing this since 1996, right, you know, in the mix. Um, turkey carcasses, a uh, little better on the category one, the carcasses are in the chiller, I think a little bit longer, you know, just thermal dynamics in terms of chilling, so the antimicrobials work. Problem is, it's not representative of what we're seeing in chicken parts or in uh, ground turkey or ground chicken. Um, you can have some improvements in, in um, the carcass, but it's not translating into the finished product. And so they've picked up standards in the ground products that you have. This goes back to Dr. Hedberg's original point, or original point on sampling. Sampling is key. Whenever we decide on, on performance standards, the sample really makes a difference as to whether you can meet a public health objective or not um, in the mix. I got a couple thoughts for you, right? To, subjects to debate just a little bit. I think we wouldn't be sitting here in many cases talking about zero and performance standards if we f have solved salmonella, right? I don't have to just talk meat and poultry. We have not solved salmonella across the food industry um, in, the fresh, in the fresh space, right, um, you know, in that mix. So salmonellosis has decreased. Um, I hear people saying, hey, okay, salmonella, 
um, incident rate in the public health sector is flat. Well, they're saying, well, if we hadn't done anything because surveillance is increased, salmonella would go up. So there's a lot of folks saying, okay, is it working or not? They're blaming kind of, hey, extra surveillance is the reason the flat line is flat. I think there's a debate in that part of it. Um, FSIS will say, hey, if you look at their risk assessment, if all facilities would move closer to category one, then it would decrease seminalinosis, okay, you know, in the mix. The problem that they're missing is we have introduced a ton of interventions. Let me just take HPP, all right? How many of you would agree that HPP is a lethality step? Okay, can you eat the product if you get the lethality? Uh, you can't in the poultry space, right? So it's a reduction step. So I have taken a, a, an intervention, right? I have reduced the numbers of salmonella, but I still have a few salmonella in there, all right? Do you think FSIS gives us credit for that? Okay, they do not, okay? So they have, they have not done anything with a prevalence model to encourage interventions to reduce and give us credit for doing that, right? We have done a ton of interventions that have done reduction. And if you happen to have a higher level, you wanna, you wanna be incentivized for continuing to reduce, but not have to fight the zero piece. And that's what we're doing right now in the meat and poultry space. Um, are all salmonella equal? We get into that constant conversation. Right? If you talk to the, the chicken pop, you know, folks, is Salmonella Kentucky a problem? It is probably the number one prevalence item that they have. It doesn't meet top 20, I don't think, relative to illnesses. They're not all equal. Is zero necessary for zero risk? I'm in Dr. Hedberg camp, right? Um, they're not looking at zero risk. How do you look at public health risk as opposed to zero of the hazard? Is it possible? Um, I don't know if it's possible if you're doing a qual qualitative. I do believe that we can get closer if we can move, shift, excuse me, the, the public or the performance standard to quantitative. Um, there is a lot of products that are sold with a small level of salmonella that does not create illness. It's not perfect, but it should be an improvement over what we're seeing in salmonellosis, and we've not seen those. So I need you to think about, right, what does that performance standard look like? If we're not going to zero, what does the performance standard look like, and what makes sense from public health? So. Um, ready for um, a discussion then. Turn it over to Scott. <laughs>